Hello, in this video today we'll be looking at how we can take a Logo application and we deploy that onto AWS Lambda. And this is going to follow a little bit of what you can find in our documentation. So if you go to typicosoftware.github.io backslash logo, up will come to the main page. And then under um, Function as a Service, Logo and Lambda, um, you'll see some documentation about that. So we'll walk through this a little bit, but we'll also have a little bit more uh, substanced uh, project that we'll be using. So a couple prerequisites in order to do this. First, you need to have Flogo CLI installed wherever you decide um, to do your design or design and um, configuration. And you obviously need an AWS account in order to actually deploy on Lambda. And um, you can sign up for one of those for free, I believe. There's uh, for one year, uh, you get certain features that are for free. So first thing you need to do is uh, create flogo.json. And what you can do is you can either copy this example here, this is just a simple uh, hello world uh, from a log, or you can build something out yourself. Um, for the case of this video, we're actually gonna build something out for ourselves. So we're gonna start off with our Flogo um, project that we have built here. Essentially, it's just something um, where you get books. Um, so let's say if I wanna type in an ISBN, and I say, this is the ISBN of a book. Can you tell me some description from it? I sh should be able to make a call on whatever uh, service I'll be querying. Um, it will bring me back that information, and I'll deploy that as a Lambda service. So I don't get charged, essentially, for running the service when it's not being used. Um, just every time that an invoke is made, um, I would essentially get charged. So it's a good way of cost saving, uh, taking advantage of Lambda's features to make sure that um, you have that an application that's sort of built in that way. And um, just to walk through a little bit of how it's built, uh, I just have an incoming log, and then essentially just to get on a URL. Um, so essentially I'm going to use this cool API. It's um, easy to use uh, to pull some books. And then depending on what the status is, it goes to a specific branch. So the first one is if the status is not 200, so if it's a failure, then I'll provide um, some sort of message. In this case, I'm going to have a logging that says error from REST service, and it's going to Oops, and if I click here, um, it's just going to provide the log message. So it's just going to say error from REST service. I can do anything. Um, so if I click here on the one where they're it, it is if you do get a successful status of 200, then I'm going to end up getting some information of the actual book. So in that case being the title, published date, description, um, that's actually pulled out from my REST service. So, um, and one more thing to make sure note of, if you actually built this out in um, web, or in the web UI, um, you need to actually make sure that you set um, this parameter. So if you if you click on here, add trigger, it'll ask you for a specific trigger. Um, you need to make sure you have this start lambda as a, as a function, or start flow as a function in lambda, because if you don't and you try to deploy it into lambda, you end up getting an error. So just then keep in mind, um, and then here is to have a receive HTTP message as I'll be uh, sending out or receiving some sort of REST response. So once you've built that out, um, or if you have a different project, it's fine. This is mostly focused on actually trying to deploy it off the Lambda. What you do is, if you're using the web UI, is that you go to export, export app, and that will um, essentially give you a uh, JSON file that has all the information for your application. And we'll be in that JSON file is the same thing as this flow.json. It's just built out for your application. So we'll be using that to actually build out um, the different dependencies and such that we need to actually uh, deploy our app into Lambda. So the next step, once you have that JSON file, either copy it or built, um, you just run a flow create command uh, with a file of whatever your JSON and then just some sort of folder. So if I go here, I already have um, the JSON file where I'm going to be designing it. So I'm just going to say flow create. create and then get and then the folder name. So what it's going to do is that it's going to pull some dependencies that are needed to actually build out this project. Um, and then once it's built out those dependencies, then it's going to place those into a new folder called Lambda, and it's going to create a JSON file um, that references those dependencies as well. So if, I, if you notice the new uh, folder called Lambda, I'm just going to go into that, and you'll see a flow JSON has been created, and your uh, your different dependencies should be within these uh, folders as well. So now if you go back to the instructions, you go next step, you CD, we already did that. Now you need to do a flow build. And essentially this is how you create a handler zip that's needed in order to actually deploy your application into Lambda. And um, how to do this is flow build E. The E essentially is for an embedded application and then uh, shim. And this is to um, essentially be able to build that out. 
and this is very important. So if you notice here, this is my land with trigger. This will be different for whatever you built. And let's say if you built this out in, um, or let's see what this one says. So this one, um, the ID here is my land with trigger, so you can just copy and paste it. So if you end up just copying this JSON um, and you use this as your Flogo app, then you can just copy and paste this command and it'll work. But if let's say you build something out in your web UI, what you need to make sure of is that if I do bam flogo.json, scroll down, that whatever ID you put in for that shim value right here has to match the ID that you have within your flogo.json, so right here. So if you notice uh, start flow as a function, the ID is called start flow as a function in Lambda. So I'm just going to copy that and then exit out. If you do not have the right ID, then you'll end up getting an error. The shim won't be able to build um, it correctly because it'll say, oh, you don't, you're not actually building anything that exists there. It uses the ID to actually know that you actually uh, want to build out this Flogo application. So Flogo build e shim and then paste out the name. And then once I hit enter, it will um, create that handler information for me and it'll place it into that Lambda directory that I created. So ls and then if I go source lambda, you'll see that there's a handler zip file there. And that's essentially what we'll be uploading into Lambda so that you could, you could actually create the function. This is what has all the information um, that Lambda needs to actually run this. So there's a couple ways that you can do this. Um, it's just depending on where you're developing or how what you're comfortable with. Um, you could deploy onto Lambda with the UI, web UI. So you just go to the console, search up Lambda, create function, provide a name, runtime, role, existing role. Um, et cetera, like that. We'll be doing in this case because I'm actually developing this on a um, on a server, so I'm not deploying it locally, so it's a little bit more difficult. I don't want to move it to my local machine and then upload it. I just want to um, just want to push it in one shot. I'm going to be using the AWS CLI that's built in within um, the EC2 instance that will let me actually um, access and uh, push up this application or the handler into Lambda. So let me just actually just copy and paste that and I'll walk through it really quickly. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to run an AWS Lambda create function and then you have to specify the region, specify name, and then you specify the zip file. And so in this case, the zip file is handler.zip and this will always be the case if you're within the, the folder that has the handler.zip. If you're not, then you have to specify the path. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, role, so this is a, a Lambda basic execution role. This is something that um, if you've ever created a Lambda function before, then you have this already. It's just you just have to find it, um, what the ARN is. But if you haven't, then um, I recommend that you, you'll, you'll have to actually create that within our, uh, you'll have to create that and then you'll be able to use it. So essentially this is how you're saying, okay, allow us to be able to execute into as a Lambda function. Handler, so this is actually very important. This will always be called Handler. So this, um, this will never change. Logo when it builds out the handler.zip, um, no matter what you call your app, no matter what you call your JSON file, um, it will always be called handler. And um, it's important to know because uh, you don't want to add like handler.zip, you don't want to add like some name of name of your app because then you're going to end up saying, oh, why isn't my app working? Um, so it's very important to, to know that this handler parameter is always handler as the value. Then the runtime, um, because Flogo's Go application will be using the uh, the newly released um, Go 1.x runtime. So hit enter. You should, if it um, is successful, you should get some sort of uh, feedback that says, okay, um, here's the function names, the size, R, um, the role that's used, uh, the handler, and the runtime. If you didn't get this, then that means um, either your um, either didn't type this in correctly, maybe you're missing something or if you misspelled something, or you don't have your uh, configurations set correctly to actually access your account. So the way that you do that is um, you can do AWS configure and you can set your keys. Um, that's a very, if you're, if you're using a machine that um, no one else is really gonna use, um, obviously it's not a very secure way to do it because your keys are exposed, exposed in plain text, or you can just specify those keys um, as well. So if I go back to the web UI, and I refresh, I should see this get book sample here. So you can see that my application has uh, been successfully um, pushed up into Lambda. 
So now let's create a test event so we can just make sure that our application is working correctly. So first you go um, select a test event. You might not have one. Um, I don't have one because it's the first time doing it. So I say configure test events. And for an event template, you can use Hello World. <clears throat> well, I'm just going to call it like book store test. And let's get rid of these two keys and have another one. So the um, input is ISBN. And then we have a string value. And then um, it'd be uh, ISBN. And then the actual ID, which I have on the page. Let me get that. So it'd be 074753200. So essentially what it's going to do is that for that ISBN parameter, it's going to fill it in with uh, this value, the string value, and then it should be able to let us um, test our application um, within here. So hit create, and you'll notice that the test use case is now there. If we hit test, it should run in execution, and you'll see um, within the logs that it's successful, tells you, and then it actually tells you what our output is. So in this case, I'm querying a uh, Harry Potter book within the bookstore. Um, I just put in what the, the number is, um, it gave me the title, publishing date, and description of it, and um, yeah, if, if there was like another ISBN that you knew, then you could um, always just put that in as well. So yeah, it's, um, we were able to test our application. We can see that now um, the app that we build to uh, query uh, books within Flogo. Here. Um, for the book with details is um, actually running on Amda, and now anytime that you run this, um, you just get billed for the duration of the actual execution. So it's not something where you're getting billed consistently um, when it's up and running. Just because of the billing model of Lambda, it's just execution, which is actually very useful for these query types of applications because obviously you're only going to be querying when someone wants something. Yeah, I um, hope that was helpful. Um, if you have uh, any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or go to our community page, community.tipco.com. Thank you.